This video is brought to you by Helix Sleep. The Treasure Planet, aka not that Treasure Planet, aka, oh no, <laughs> Twitter's gonna kill me for this one. Um, Planetata Nascar Vistata. An F in English? Bobby, you speak English. You know what? We'll just call it Bulgarian Treasure Planet for this video. Which is, by the way, the unofficial nickname for the movie. Why? Well, dummy, it was made in Bulgaria. Now, some of y'all might have an idea of what I'm talking about, and most likely due to this legendary clip that is occasionally uploaded to Twitter like every so often. Two animated characters fighting it out in an action sequence that would make Spider-Verse envious. It is raw, overwhelming chaos. Right down to the funky synth pop, character running animation, and sound effects. Now, this clip is obviously from the movie, and you would think that it's the most outrageous moment from said film. But no, not even close. It is literally the tip of the iceberg. Words fail me to even describe other moments in this movie. Here, this is just a sample of what's to come. Okay, Billy. <laughs> You're behaving like a bunch of rum sodden sailors. <laughs> now cut that out. Report on the condition of your circuitry. If I a fair warning, folks. You are about to get a massive dose of psychic damage. Just like my Alpha and Omega video with Lizzie, I forced another friend of mine to suffer alongside me. Tom! Haha, <laughs> Tom! He runs the gaming channel with me, and boy, did he suffer with this one. Like, I'm starting to realize that I have a higher tolerance for pain when it comes to watching this caliber of content. Because Tom here had to, like, pause the movie every so often and just sat there with his face in his hands. I was like, Tom? Tom? You okay, dude? And he was like, uh. And yeah, I, th I think he might have been crying. Oh, and there is a question floating around about Disney's Treasure Planet and if it ripped off this movie. No, it did not. Let's just go ahead and get that out of the way, all right? It did not. If anything, it is coincidental, and the only similarities the two movies share are being in space and adapting the story of Treasure Island, but that's it. I mean, does Disney have Brian Cranston voicing in their movies? Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. Um, by the way, I'm being 100% serious. Brian Cranston is a voice actor in this film. It's like one of his first acting roles. Say my name. Your name is Jim Hawkins. You're goddamn right. But here's the biggest surprise of all. I went into this movie with Tom, ready to make him hurt and also laugh at the film itself. But as we watched it, I personally became enthralled by the entire experience. It is unlike anything I've ever seen before. And I made some further discoveries that profoundly changed my entire opinion and outlook about this movie. What exactly did I discover? Does Tom make it to the end of watching the movie? Why the hell is Mickey Mouse here? Well, let's find out. I... I don't understand. Neither do I, but I'll try to explain it to you. So, what are the origins of Bulgarian Treasure Planet? Well, just so you all know, I am hyper aware of the cliche YouTuber thing where they have like this very innocuous topic, like who invented donuts, but the history portion of the topic somehow starts with like World War II. But guys, it kind of applies here. I, I swear, I swear I'll keep this short, okay? Bulgaria, a country in like Eastern Europe, fell into the Eastern Bloc after World War II and was essentially under Soviet control. The country was under this jurisdiction from 1946 to 1990. Now, it goes without saying that the U.S. has been and continues to be one of the primary players when it comes to the production of animation. The process itself is expensive, time-consuming, and a luxury for those who don't have the accessibility or resources of American studios, especially before the advent of the internet. Now, does that mean that the rest of the world doesn't care for animation? No, of course not. It's just tough to do. But that did not stop other countries from trying. Case in point, 
Bulgarian Treasure Planet. Released in 1982, this film was a sci-fi adaptation of the renowned novel from Robert Louis Stevenson, Treasure Island. I guess there's just something about this story that lends itself to adaptations. Right, Tim Curry? <laughs> Pirates. The studio behind the Treasure Planet was Sophia Animation Studio, who I think is still around? <laughs> I, I, I try to find out. There's like some website called Rembrandt Films, which like sells cartoons from Sophia Animation, such as the Three Fools series and Singing Cowboys. But that's the best info I could track down. Also, I learned that one of the people who worked on the Treasure Planet was Rumen Petkov. He was actually the director of the film and would go on to work on popular animated series such as Dexter's Lab, Cow and Chicken, and Johnny Bravo, to name a few. Also, during my research, I was pleasantly surprised to learn about Bulgaria's rich history when it comes to animation. They've been at it since the 1920s and keep up to this very day, though most mainstream audiences aren't familiar with their content. Why? A lack of distribution. It is already difficult enough to get Americans to watch content that isn't made in America, let alone when there's a Cold War going on. <laughs> if anything, I need to make a dedicated video about Bulgarian animation in the future because it is truly something else, like really special stuff here. That being said, we should count our lucky stars that Bulgarian treasure planet did not fade away from the pages of history. It endured throughout the years and resurfaced online as this bizarre piece of animated chaos. Chaos that was created by a small yet passionate group of artists who pulled together and fielded one of the most surreal things I've ever seen. Folks, brace yourselves. Stop, turn it off, I can't stand it anymore. So what's the treasure planet about? Oh, where to begin? I actually wrote like four pages of notes on paper while watching the movie, and as I look at them at the time of writing this video, I'm just sitting in my office chair dumbfounded, thinking, what the hell was this movie about? These notes, they're worthless. I, ha I have something here about a tentacle sex monster, and then something about how the, the heads of the characters are animated separately from their bodies? What? The movie starts off with abstract and celestial imagery, as we hear our main character, Philippe, whisper about memories and something about responsibility and a, a cat eats him and, um, there's mushrooms? Yeah, a, a good start. We then fade to Earth and see some, like, <laughs> robots sucking on each other. Uh, yeah, well, let's go with that. It's also heavily implied that Earth is like some robotic dystopia now. And you, <laughs> you think it would be the uh, Terminators who do us in, but no, it's the sucky sex pod bots. So Philippe here is our stand-in for Jim Hawkins. Why? I don't know. Most of the other characters, if not like all of them, use the same names that they're based on from the book. Silver Silver, Smollett Smollett, um, yeah. Philippe here is the outlier. He chats it up with Billy Bones as Billy regales Philippe about his adventures with Captain Flint and how he's keeping a secret treasure map. And yes, I cannot look away from this animation. It is simultaneously terrible, yet mesmerizing. I've never seen anything quite like it. Billy then gets jumped by Black Dog, and the two have one of the most epic showdowns in anime history. Big hands, jetpacks, helicopter wheelchairs, fire guns, disco synth. How did this movie not win an Oscar for this scene alone? Also, the comedy in this movie is a weird combo of nonsensical Looney Tunes-esque slapstick and then dry humor with deadpan deliveries. It's a rare combo that is oddly hilarious. What's wrong with you, Mr. Bones? Hmm? What's wrong? Oh, nothing much unless you count the fact that I'm about to die. Philippe gets the treasure map, takes off to Captain Smollett, who's like <laughs> rocking this Sigma Chad energy, and the two take off with this crew of robots to go hunt down the treasure in space. Oh, and of course, Long John Silver joins the story, though I gotta say, in a contest between Disney's Long John and this movie's Long John, I think Disney kind of wins. J just barely, just a bit. How much is 3,243,749 multiplied by 9,743,301? 21. That's close enough. For the sake of maintaining our sanity, I'm just gonna hit y'all up with the bullet points for the remainder of the story. 
because there's just too much to unpack here. There's a random dance number with the robot goons. There's a robot parrot that says to Long John, you don't turn me on and that's for sure. And then the ship catches on fire and somehow ends up in the actual Treasure Island story, boat and all. Like the captain even says, Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. So I guess the story is canon in their universe? Of Treasure Island fame by Robert Louis Stevenson. Welcome to the 17th century. Oh. They even call Philippe Jim Hawkins. I don't know. I, I just don't know. It, it's all over the place. Also, like some tentacle monsters show up and do uncomfortable things. <laughs> the boat and the characters then transform back to normal. Well, you know, more normal. And then they all arrive to Treasure Planet, AKA Stop Motion Planet, where the captain and Philippe are promptly betrayed by Long John and his crew. Then there's like this robot monster called Nebuchadnezzar that like attacks the crew, but is defeated by um, the power of uncanny opera. The captain and Philippe then escape Silver and find themselves going through trials as they approach closer to Flint's treasure. So where do we go from here, Commander? We take the anti-gravity elevator. It's pretty great, because the captain's advice for everything is, just ignore it. You're on fire? Ignore it. Sexy demon women are grinding all over your crotch? Just ignore them. <laughs> and it works. Just mm -hmm. ignore them. That's easy to say, Commander, but oh my gosh. You don't fool me. Why don't you give up? So the treasure is found, but Silver leaves the captain and Philippe stranded on the planet and takes off with the ship and leaves them all behind. But then the ship comes back a few days later because Black Dog took it over and was on Philippe's side the entire time because Philippe saved him from the tentacle monsters. Hell, I mean, if that was me, I'd be in debt too. Philippe, you saved my life. Mm. No, you risked your own life to save mine. Thank you, Philippe. Mm. We then discovered that the treasure is like Noah's Ark in a way with a bunch of animals and, and plant DNA. Hold on, <laughs> that's the plot of Titan AE. You know, that Don Bluth film from Fox Animation that was complete flop, where like Earth blows up and they have this spaceship that's like hidden away that has like the genetic codes to rebuild a new Earth. Did both Treasure Planet and Titan AE steal from Bulgarian Treasure Planet? No, but that is genuinely one hell of a coincidence. Inside this container are no diamonds, no platinum, gold or silver but something far more precious. It is a modern Noah's Ark. This ship has the power to create a planet, to create a new home. So the ending, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> the ship catches on fire, again, gets sucked into a black hole, the captain gets shot, <laughs> Philippe kills Silver, <laughs> The treasure is shoved into an escape pod. The ship gets completely enveloped by the black hole. Philippe describes it as a dimension of eternal nothingness, hearkening back to the start of the movie. And then the pod with the treasure lands back on Earth, where it then repopulates the planet in what I can only describe as organic racial stereotypes and animals too. And all of this to the tune of Ode to Joy. Oh, also uh, Mickey Mouse is there too. What? This entire film is such a fever dream. The tonal shifts will break your neck from whiplash as we go from thought compelling dialogue about the horrors of space to a bunch of robot minions trying to trick the captain into giving them a haircut. What can I do for you? A haircut, just a trim. Nothing off the top and don't touch the sideburns, okay? I'm not a barber, I'm the space fleet commander. Yes, Disney's Treasure Planet is superior in every single way, especially when it comes to character development. One of the best parts about Treasure Island is the relationship between Jim and Silver, but that's not really a thing in this movie. If anything, Philippe is closer to the captain, and even then, they're more like co-workers if anything. The story, absurd and confusing. The humor, nonsensical and ridiculous. The voice acting, 
stiff, yet chaotic. And the exact same thing can be said for the animation too. It's like they were somehow able to achieve static visuals and feverish movement in the very same breath. That's genuinely impressive. If anything, Bulgarian Treasure Planet gives me 2001 A Space Odyssey and Fantastic Planet vibes with its overall tone, though it is much more unfocused and unrefined with its characters, story, themes, tone, visuals, just everything. Yet oddly enough, and don't hate me for saying it, I love it. There's something pure about this movie and its very existence. It was made because Bulgarian artists wanted to make it. Not for money, not for fame, but for art. The term that comes to mind is kitsch, which is when art looks tacky and low quality, but was made with sincerity and can be appreciated in a knowing way. That's what I see here. A team that tried their best with what they had and created something wholly original. Is it good in a traditional sense? No but I can absolutely see the awkward beauty and effort in this film. And I'll take that over an assembly line of uninspired, focus-tested products any day. That's right, send illumination into the black hole instead. <laughs> In conclusion, Bulgarian Treasure Planet was such a pleasant surprise. I'm so accustomed to low-quality movies with cheap budgets and minimal effort that only exists to make money. Bible Town? Awful. That Marmaduke movie from Netflix? Absolute garbage. Hell, there are even movies with big budgets that are just as guilty of the same and lack any heart or conviction when it comes to their craft. They are not making art. They're making a product but that is far from the case for Bulgarian Treasure Planet. The people behind this movie had a burning desire to share a story via the medium of animation, yet they lacked the polished skills, equipment, and best practices to do so efficiently. Did that stop them? No, cause they're artists. And by God, were they going to art? The story and characters and visuals and just everything were all over the place. But there was genuine effort involved in the making of this film. And I just respect the hell out of that. Especially when it comes from people who don't have the same luxuries of Hollywood. Now, does this movie have problems? Oh, oh absolutely. And they can be a slog to get through. But Bulgarian Treasure Planet will hold a special place in my heart as a film that represents the indomitable spirit of artist. This team wanted to share their vision, and boy, what a vision it was. If anything, it stands out as a novelty, but in a very satisfying yet chaotic way. Now then, time to jump into this black hole, and I'm bringing Tom with me, let's go! So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Helix Sleep. I've had my bed from Helix for like two years now, and my uh, rest just improves. It just keeps getting better, getting some of the best sleep of my life. You know, what, what I do is I, I walk in at night, look at the bed, I'm like, oh, hey you. I'm gonna pump on top of you. P-O-M-F, pump. That's the sound I make when I hit the bed. Pfft. That's a different sound, actually. I make both sounds. So for those who don't know, Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door. It all starts with the Helix Sleep Quiz. Everybody's different, and Helix knows that. So they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Do you sleep on your side, on your tummy, on your back, uh, on the ceiling? Uh, oh, we're gonna find some vampires in here. Do you want your mattress to be soft or firm? For me, I sleep on my side. I also like a mattress that is firm, but not like too firm, so kind of soft. A hybrid, if you will. Also, I wanted a bed that was big enough for me and all the pets of my house. Because like I want to stretch out and the kitty, she sits on the corner, uh, yeah, just you know how it goes. Based on those preferences, the quiz suggested the Midnight Helix Lux in queen size. And folks, I love it. It's been a perfect fit since day one. And for those of you who share a bed with a partner, see now you're just bragging, you can have them take the quiz alongside you so both of you can find that perfect compromise. Also, like I said earlier, the mattress is shipped right to your front door with free shipping in the US. It's rolled up in a box and is very easy to set up. Unless you're me, because I'm dumb 
and I opened the box <laughs> in a room that couldn't facilitate it. So I got pinned against the wall. And if you're hesitant about buying a Helix you haven't been able to try, no worries. There's a 100 night sleep trial. So you have over three months to try out your selection and make sure that you love it. If you don't, Helix will pick up the mattress and you'll get a full refund. Helix also has a 10 year warranty. And they also offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night of sleep is never far away. So I absolutely recommend Helix Sleep. I love my Helix, and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Click the link down below or go to helixsleep.com slash saberspark and get up to $200 off your Helix mattress plus two pillows for free.